course, thank you, Dr. Hagen, for letting us uh, present our findings today. Uh, we are, the three of us, chemical engineering seniors, Brigham Young University, with 12 years combined experience in studying chemical engineering principles between the three of us. Um, we have done a project on the distillation and reflux control. We, uh, we know that in the petrochemical industry, 40 to 60 percent of the energy consumption actually takes place in distillation. And um, with that, 6 percent of all the U.S. energy consumption. And so we know that affecting that can make a big difference in today's world. And uh, we propose today on an option of controls. Uh, and I know it's, it can be uh, disconcerting to allow a computer-run controller to man something so massive as a distillation column as important as one. But um, our findings today will prove, as we perform some tests and operations on a distillation column that separates cyclohexane and, and heptane, that in fact can be the best option to improve and manage um, energy waste. So here we have a, a diagram of the distillation column model that we were using. And we ran a few step tests on our distillation column to find s some different tuning constants for our controller. We uh, would change the reflux ratio and measure the distillate change, the fraction of the feed going through the bottoms and the bottoms change, as well as uh, the feed as a disturbance and measure how it affected both of those. And once we had our uh, KP, theta P, and tau P, we would use some rules to turn them into tuning constants. Uh, we use the IMC rules, the Exxon Mobil shortcut rules, as well as the ITA rules, and we and planned on testing them on these three types of controllers. We have the non-interactive controller, an interactive feed-forward controller, as well as a non-linear controller. And as our results will show, the ITA uh, was really bad, so we just threw those completely out and just focused on these two different types of rules here. Mm -hmm. So once we had all of those constants, <coughs> uh, we used some different methods to run some simulations on, on those constants and test how well they performed. Uh, we, for the non-interacting controllers, we used an, a MATLAB APM simulation that didn't involve Simulink. Um, and then for the interacting controllers, we set up the Simulink system that um, that simulated the same step changes that went into the non-interacting controllers. And we also ran a, a simulation with MATLAB and APM on the nonlinear controls. As a result, uh, we have uh, these results, which show how well all the different controls follow the set points. Uh, this dark blue line right here that's kind of hidden is, is the set point. And you can see that the non-interacting Non interacting controllers and the nonlinear controllers did not do very well in following the set point. And at these little blips right here is where the feed was changed. Um, and so we can see that the interacting IMC control and the non or the interacting exon controls did, did very well at following the set point. Um, and it, the, to us, it looks like the interacting IMC controls do a little bit better because they don't vary as much as the uh, the Exxon mobile controls do. And for the, the, the fraction of cyclohexane in the bottoms, it, it ends up being the same, where we have <coughs> the best controls uh, being done by the interacting IMC controllers. So in conclusion, we recommend using interacting IMC controllers for distillation columns so that we can save lots of energy that will help out the rest of America. Thank you.